Let's move on and talk to uh, Conor McManus about Gaelic football. Conor joins us this morning with thanks to Imagine Broadband. Imagine Broadband is continuing to expand its high-speed network in rural areas that are currently unserviced by fibre networks. Networks. Visit imagine.ie today to check availability in your area. Conor, good morning. How are you getting on? Sure, how are you? How's things? Yeah, pretty good. Um, this is a, a very straightforward question. When, when a team like Tyrone, who you are very close to and play year in, year out, go on and win in the All-Ireland, how sickened are you by that? <laughs> Next question, Jeff. <Jack. laughs> it must be a little bit kind of like, ah, oh, because we hear this hoary old cliche, the, the Ulster counties all support each other when they come down to Cork Park, but that can't be true because they're your nearest rivals and nearest, nearest neighbours and you're like always up against them in big games and you beat them in Ulster quite a lot. But um, then they go and make the breakthrough. It's like, oh, I'm delighted for them. Couldn't happen to a nicer yeah. bunch. Yeah, <laughs> you paint a very good picture there. Um, I look, at, it's 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 difficult whenever you see one of your rivals going on and, and doing ultimately what you want to go and do, you know. And I suppose we've been uh, knocking on the door against Tyrone and and that this last number of years. Um, beat them some days, didn't beat them other days. Obviously, this year in Ulster finally we didn't beat them. They go on ahead and. Um, and beat Kerry and beat and beat uh, Mayo in an All Ireland final, you know, and you'd have to say deservedly so. And hats off to them; they went and they got it done. But I suppose from our point of view, it doesn't make it any easier sitting looking on. But on the, on the flip side of that, it probably it probably gives you a wee bit more encouragement than maybe the likes of Tyrone or some of those teams over the last number of years have been going to them semi finals and finals ourselves and and falling short against the the Dublins and uh, of this world. So. It gives you a wee bit of encouragement also that you know when you see when you see the likes of Tyrone going on ahead and, and, and closing the deal out, um, you know, why not why not some other, some of the rest of us? What what made this Tyrone team this year so capable of closing those games out as you mentioned there? Um well I'd say probably like they, they got over the line against themselves in, in a tight game at Crow Park um in the Ulster final. And they probably gathered a wee bit of a bit of momentum from that. They carried it into the, the Kerry game. They played a certain style of football, which which I don't think Kerry were were ready for on on the day. Um, and they, they totally outworked them and and out, outfought them more so than anything else. And I suppose look at when when you get a when you get a big win in Crow Park like that on, on the back of winning an also title in Crow Park. It gives you a lot of confidence, and, and you can see that in Tyrone going into the All-Ireland final that they were just going out and playing with, with total confidence and, and no real no real regard for who they were playing, you know, be it Kerry, Mayo, or whoever else. It was going to be coming away. They were just playing their own game, and, and you know, hats off to them. That no real regard for who you're playing, did you feel that there was a bit of a shift this year and that there can be a shift over the next little while now that Mayo have actually beaten Dublin, that Dublin have been beaten, essentially? Like, was that a... A, 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 as big a psychological barrier as much as anything else, the fact that it did seem that they were invincible at times. Yeah, well, everybody knows this last six years what Dublin have done and, and how good and how good they've been in tight games. They've always found a way to get over the line and ultimately this year they came up short. But, you know, when you're, when you're a team on the bounce for a seventh year on, the row, in, on a row, you know, they had already won six. It's very, very hard to keep that going and, and it's incredible that they've done what they've done. So it was going to always come to an end and it was always going to come down. A day was always going to come for Dublin when a team just wanted it that wee bit more. And you could see that in Mayo this year, you know. I do expect Dublin to be back in the four, in the reckoning now next year and they'll, they'll dust themselves off and they'll go again. But definitely the thing is more even now than, than it was for a long number of years, you know. That's the other side, isn't it? Like the the um, annoyance that somebody else got it done instead of you. That Once that passes... <laughs> And then it's like, hang on a second. It, at the start of the year, right when when Owen's doing his famous power rankings at the start of the year, there's going to be a big debate about who goes where and just how close all those teams are to each other. Yeah, well, look, it, it probably is. It probably is closer than it has been. And, and, and at the start of every year, it's always said it's going to be a competitive championship and it's really tight and it's difficult. But you know, it, it definitely is. You know, it definitely is really tight. And even if you take Ulster on its own, you know. There's any one of five, six, seven teams who are fancy themselves to win an Ulster title there, you know. Um, so it's 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 really really competitive. And then obviously you have Kerry under new management this year. Um, Mayo will be coming back. Galway would fancy themselves coming back into the reckoning again, and obviously Dublin as well. So it's um, 
it is. It's, it's a really tough championship, and we're going to be competitive. And, and we'll also get a better look at it this year now because we have a full round of, of national league fixtures as well. So we have a better idea where people are sitting then by the, by the end of that. Yeah, and and there's going to be a back door at least, so that you're not getting straight knockout in the championship. And the McKenna Cup, and the McKenna Cup stand as well. So everybody um, was missing the McKenna Cup, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're delighted. Training starts on the 8th of December officially. The rest of the country is uh, taking the day off to go to Dublin and you guys are all getting back to training. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be back, we'll be back. We'll be back. Enough. It's great news, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I love it. Um, <laughs> it's a condensed season. It's a condensed season. So with, um, with, it does, you, in fairness, the, 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 time, the time scale around it is, is tighter. So you can see that you're not looking at, you know, it's eight, nine, ten months now. And saying that you'd gladly do that if it was taking you to an all Ireland semi final or final. But the reality is every city, every player in the country now knows that it's it's a six week a six month buy in from here on in. Like so it, it does make that that commitment or that buy in a wee bit easier, you know. The great thing is that there is a mechanic up and that there's not a proposal B because, I mean, everybody was doing the work for Monaghan over the last few months, Connor. Everybody was fighting against the idea of this Team 6 from Division 1 not being included in the knockout stages of the All-Ireland Championship. Did, did that warm the heart a little bit to, to hear the people from the Ulster Council and the Leinster Council coming out and fighting your cause? I'm not sure they were fighting for us now. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what? they were fighting for us now. It's, it's only for us now. Um, but I, I did. I did feel as if it wasn't. It wasn't a really. The, the, the idea. The idea is good, you know. And, and there was. There were a lot of pluses to it. Um, but it, it it has highlighted the need for change. Anyway, that's one thing we we all know. But uh, as we as we all know as well, in the GA, it takes it takes time to get change in, in. So God knows when this will happen. God knows when this will happen. Indeed. Um, uh, I'm not retiring you yet, but like it, it could it could be another ten years away. And I, you know, maybe you will still be uh, kicking nine points a game in ten years. No, 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 no. I can assure you of that. Eh? Uh, I did want to ask you, right? You, you've had a front row seat for the complete evolution of how the game has changed over the last decade or so. From well, over the last fifteen years, right? Your your intercounty career coincides with a period where it was ultra defensive and. Games could have finished seven, eight, seven, or nine, six, and we would have thought, well, that's kind of how it goes. To now, it's like one nineteen to one seventeen, and they're classics, even among traditional defensive powerhouses. What happened? Why do you think the change has happened? Um, I think I think there's there's so much more work going into teams now. Like from from when I started, like I started training with Monaghan back in this time of the year in two thousand and six. In preparation for the 2007 season, um, and the difference in the levels of attention to detail, the difference in the levels of attention to training, to analysis, to how you can improve, to how you can get better, and, and picking your way around defensive screens and organizing teams in terms of offensively, defensively, your own kickouts, opposition kickouts. The, the level of work and the level of detail that's going into preparing the county teams now is is just unbelievable and compared to where it was when I came in and and when I when I came in Monaghan were, were lifted to a level that they had never been at before but comparing to where they're at now to then it's just a total different game altogether you know so you you, you had in the in the mid in the mid teens you know where where I suppose Jim McGuinness came in and ultimately changed Gaelic football. You had that period of defensive football, and you had then games where they were finishing ten eight or eleven nine or whatever it may be. Then obviously Dublin found a way around that, and in order to compete, then you had to beat Dublin, and in order to beat Dublin, you had to go to Crow Park and score one sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen. All the while, defensive screens and sweepers remained in place, so it has become just a a, a, a think tank basically, and how you can get around these things and how you can still knock up them 117, 118 score lines whilst trying to keep it tight at the back. I know that sounds contradictory, but that's the reality of where it's at. Like you look at Dublin over the last number of years, they, they, they still had at times 14 men behind the ball, 15 men behind the ball. And in order to beat that, you had to be fit to post 117, 118. So at the level of work and the amount of tension to detail and the amount of, of um, analysis and and you know, video room room 
and work that's going on in, in, in inter-county teams at the minute is, is phenomenal, like, you know. Is it enjoyable? It is enjoyable, and, and I suppose that's a question that get post, gets posted around a lot, you know, is, is our players enjoying it? And, you know, there, there probably is more of a dropout um, amongst inter-county players now than maybe there ever has been, or maybe it's just been highlighted more, I'm not too sure. Um, but if you go to if you go to dressing rooms and ask guys, are they enjoying it? Like, and I, I, I don't think you're going to get too many men saying no. I'm, I'm here just because I feel as if I have to be here. No, I don't think that's the answer. At the end of the day, like when I you know whenever I look back and whenever I whenever the day does come that I have to hang up my boots, I look back as my 15, 16, 17 years with Bond as the best years of my life. You know, so it certainly won't. It certainly isn't a, a, a grind. That's for sure. And is it more enjoyable now? In a way, like the, the the fact that you're actually trying to score 119 as opposed to trying to win games with 10, 11, 12 points. Yeah, well, it, it probably is. It's it's um, the game is a wee bit more free flowing, and I suppose from a spectator's point of view, it's maybe it's maybe a wee bit better. But then games back then, and uh, you know, while so it's got a lot of negative press at the time, they were quite interesting as well, and and trying you know watching teams trying to break down defenses and and figure things out and I know being involved in some of them games ourselves with Monaghan you know the level of detail and work that you had to go just to try and work your way around and navigate your way around at, at blanket defence was and actually coming out on the right side of it there was a certain enjoyment of that as well you know yeah well it feels like we've kind of reached that evolution it's where defences were on top for a while and then the best thinkers went away and, and came up with plans to break them down and mm. you know there, there could very well be a defensive cycle around the corner in a couple of years time it, who knows it will come again it will come again yeah it will come again somebody come up with a plan that's going to be very hard to beat for a year or two and as you say everybody else has to go back to the to the tank again and, and, and rethink things so it, it will it continue to evolve and, and as you say we could be back in a, in, a, in a couple of years time looking at defensive screens again well, hopefully they don't change the rules and tamper with things just to try and fix things that aren't actually mm. broken uh, Connor, great stuff you, you obviously don't have any intention to announce your retirement sooner rather than later you're going to see how the, the off season and next season goes or are you already committed to next season for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. We 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 go again. We we'll look after a couple of injuries and a couple of knocks that that unfortunately come your way at this um, at this age more than the more than you would like. But uh, no, we we'll, we we'll, we we'll get the body right and we we'll, we we'll go again in twenty twenty two. Am I right in saying you, did you move back to Monaghan as a result of the pandemic or was that before the pandemic? No, no. That was that was before. That was before. Yeah, I I could see the pandemic coming, so I just. <laughs> And do you, do you feel like that that's kind of maybe not not elongated the career a little bit, but but giving you a bit more freshness? I, I know it's not, obviously not maybe just the same level of a drive that some of the Mayo lads would have had to do in previous years, but, uh, but getting up and yeah, down the road, yeah. like yeah, when I was in Dublin there for whatever it was four years or whatever it was, um, there was you know it was it was taxing, you know, and like again, we were not at the same level as 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 Mayo from the point of view that we weren't looking at a three or three and a half hour journey. We were an hour and a half, two hours, depending on traffic and things like that, you know, so we were on the borderline whereby it wasn't feasible for us to be training in Dublin and the boys down the road training at home, two separate groups, so we were always training together, um, so you, you did have that to contend with, but yeah, it has, it has had, you know, being, being, being local and um, just, just the, the small things in terms of getting into your car after training and you're back home in 15, 20 minutes, you know, or less. So things like that make a big, make a big difference, you know, in terms of recovery and sleep and nutrition and all them things that you're trying to, to take off when you're, when you're playing into county football, you know. It might be no harm to have a, a little niggle in the back or in a hamstring that nobody can quite pinpoint for December and, and early January so that you can emerge fresh in uh, look at February, me March. I'm on top of that here. I, I've been very much after that here. Um, in the last league game, I managed to break a bone or two in my hand, so that'll be that'll be me on the shelf for a couple of weeks anyway. Right? Was it? Were you punching the ball? Is that what happened? The, actually, no. It was very accidental. Now, in fairness, um, but yeah. So I'll I'll be I'll be on the sidelines for a wee while just. To well, listen, that through. We wish you the best of the recovery. Great to have you with us, Connor. Thanks a million. Cheers. All right, guys. Thanks. It's uh, Conor McManus there, uh, one of the legends of Gaelic football, talking to us uh, with thanks to Imagine Broadband. Imagine Broadband is continuing to expand its high-speed network in rural areas that are currently unserviced by fibre networks. Visit imagine.ie today to check availability in your area. What were we going to say? Ah, well, that's it now. If McManus is out, I'm not watching the McKenna Cup. <laughs> I think there's still going to be big crowds. Yeah, of course uh, If, if, if yeah. the crowds are allowed to go to the McKenna Cup games, it'll be like, no, 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 no one's going to go to a match in January. And then like 9,000 go to a McKenna Cup game because there's been no inter-county action in such a long time.
Yeah, probably. It's like it's like it's the most obvious thing of all time. What was the figure in the papers last week that there was a, 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 a mechanical game in 2006? 600,000 radish. 2006, yeah. <laughs> uh, our maths were on that year. I think it was 15, 16 